I always found in the past that the toughest nerves I ever had were actually singing for a, an audience of all people I know. Like uh, um, coming home and, and getting in front of the, the church that I, the, the, where I know everybody in the congregation. And I know that everyone is on my side. But somehow I find myself standing there and it's the most nervous I can possibly be. But uh, this is, but it's also uh, inviting, so it's also fun. And that's kind of, that's kind of the sort of situation, I guess, here. But, uh, but it's such a, such a good orchestra and such a, a good hall. And uh, it's, it's a good situation with people that, that know me, a lot of people I know in the audience as well. So, um, in general, it's a very nice situation. There are some dramatic changes, and it, in some ways it reminds me of the mindset of doing a leader recital, because in recitals you are jumping from character to character relatively quickly, but uh, and most of the time in opera you have a whole role where at one point in the opera there's a kind of a key moment where you have this big aria, and we're taking all these key moments out of a number of different operas and plunking them all together in, a, in, in one time. So um, vocally and dramatically and everything, it is a bit of a challenge, but uh, it's also an awful lot of fun. I, I suggested a lot of things. And uh, when, uh, when Rob was uh, talking to me about suggestions for this, I didn't realize how much repertoire um, I would enjoy doing. We could have done ten different programs and uh, and still had had more things that I'd like to try. It, in a lot of ways, like there's obviously some big challenges involved with doing a program like this, but it's also a really fun time. Like it, it's uh, to be able to sing like some of these arias, I. I plan my schedule to try and do a production where I can do some of this music. So um, to be able to do a few of these things in one evening that I that I aim a whole pile, pile of time around being able to perform, that's wonderful. It is kind of like a busman's holiday in some ways, um, in, in the good way. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting thing because if people look at what I've done, it sort of seems like I've changed from what I had first done to this. In my mind, at the very start of my career, I started singing very young for a lot of this stuff. And uh, I always had a thought in the back of my mind that the heavier repertoire, like the Wagner's and so on, would probably be what would suit me the best, because I, I felt this kind of dark grit in my sound though I couldn't be doing that music back in my mid-twenties. Um, and uh, Handel and Mozart worked well for me in the early music. Uh, I got some great contacts early on and uh, they liked the fact that I could do um, sing with a, a fuller sound, but I was able to learn how to deal with a lot of the early music style um, at that point. And so I had some good success in that. But uh, I think I always knew that my voice would develop to the point where it would be more consistently rich and I would be able to handle um, the heavier repertoire eventually. But uh, So it was a natural development, but um, in, in a way it's, uh, it's not easy to change since I had success in some of these earlier, uh, earlier music things. Uh, because people like to pigeonhole and logically pigeonhole people because um, you've got to have a product that people will buy basically as a singer. But uh, yeah, so there has been a recent change and it's partially because of age, but it's also a logical thing to me. Oh, there's a few, yeah. There's. Uh, well, interestingly, when we talk about how early on in, in uh, my career I was thinking about Wagner already, the first opera I, I ever saw was Die Valkyrie at, uh, at the Met. And, um, and uh, I thought at that point I wanted to sing Wotan. 
and uh, I, the year, year and a half ago, I had a chance to sing uh, Alberich in uh, Rheingold, and I'm doing that this year again in production, and uh, that's pretty close. Um, so I'm on my way to, to that land now, but uh, that's, that's a role I'd love to do. And, uh, and also, when you're thinking about the Russian repertoire, um, Boris is one of those roles that uh, I'd just love to sing at some point soon. But uh, there are um, things that take a while to work your way into, but uh, I think I'm starting to more move in that direction these days. So that's kind of an exciting prospect. Yeah, that's, that is a bit of a challenge, although um, all of these things I've learned in these languages, so it's, it's natural to sing in these languages when I do this music. But uh, the most recent thing I've learned is the Czech, and I had never sung a Czech before, um, but uh, uh, the reason I've, I've included, other than the fact that it's a beautiful aria, um, the, the Vodnik from Rusolka, I'm doing that in Beijing in I start rehearsals in two weeks from now, I guess, in Beijing. So um, I'll be uh, performing that soon for the first time. So I've, uh, it's a fresh thing, and so I uh, felt that it would be fun to share it here first. <laughs> in early music, the lower voices, the basses and the baritones, uh, often were the noble characters or the gods or the earthy kind of beings. And uh, every once in a while had this kind of had a slight evil edge to them, but uh, as time went on, it uh, more often than not they stayed as the the noble characters, but they became a little more nasty, um, and so uh, which is always a lot of fun to play on stage, to be honest.